The example we're going to see is that of estimation of a DC voltage from noisy measurements. So imagine that we would like to measure the value of a constant voltage, which is unknown to us, and we only have at our disposal a voltmeter that is old or just bad and produces very noisy measurements. We can model each of the measurements obtained with this voltmeter, maybe we obtain several of them, capital N, as the observations or the data Xn, which is going to be equal to the true voltage that we want to estimate, but it's going to be added on top of it a noise process W of N. In this case, we have modeled the noise process as an IID Gaussian process with zero mean. So, in this setup, we can think of a couple of estimators and we're going to actually define two of them. Our first estimator, which we will call estimator 1, and we will denote as theta with a tilde on it, is going to be a very simple estimator. Of all the n measurements that we have, we are going to guess that the value of the DC voltage is just going to be the first measurement. Now you can think that this is probably not a very good estimator, but this we will evaluate later when we compute its bias and its MSE. The second estimator is going to be an estimator that you have already worked with in this course. We're going to add up together all the measurements from 1 to n and we will divide by the number of them. As you already know, this estimator here is the sample mean estimator and it simply estimates the mean of x, of the measurement x. Since we know that the noise has zero mean, we expect that we know that the measurements also will have a mean equal to theta. And therefore, by applying the sample mean, we expect to obtain an accurate estimate of the DC voltage theta. Before we go into computing the bias and the MSC for each of these estimators, we can actually have a look and simulate several realizations of them and have a look at their performance. This is what we have done in these three plots here, in which we have using the model that we discussed before, plotted three realizations of the data, x of n. We have the true parameter, the true voltage theta, plotted in red. We have the result of the first estimator, estimator 1, plotted in yellow. And in purple, we plot the value of our sample mean estimator, estimator 2. Now, as we can see, the data fluctuates very much around the true value, which is the red line here, for each of the realizations. As you can see, the first estimator, estimator 1, simply picks the first value of the measurements, the first measurement, and sets this as its estimate. In some cases, like the first and the third realization, we can see that the first measurement is actually relatively far away from the true value. In this case, the true value is 3. And therefore, the estimator produces large errors. For the second realization, however, the first measurement has a very small error around the true value of theta, and therefore it provides an accurate estimate. You can also see that for the first realization, estimator 1 is overestimating the true parameter, and for the third realization, it's underestimating. Our second estimator, which is the sample mean, represented in purple, 
as we can see, is much more accurate, at least for these three realizations. Here in the plot, we can almost see no difference between the true value of theta and its estimate. The same for each of the realizations. So already with these three realizations of the estimator, we get the impression that estimator 2, the sample mean, is going to be much more accurate than estimator 1, which is simply setting the estimate to the value of the first measurement. Next, we are going to compute the bias and the mean squared error of these two estimators, and we will show why est estimator 2 is better than estimator 1. So, let's now evaluate the bias and the MSE of each of the estimators, which I have written here, and I have also written up here in this corner the model of our observations, because we will need it to do the calculations. Let's start with the bias of estimator 1. So, as we know, the bias is simply the expectation of the estimation error. And to carry out this computation, I can just substitute the estimator by its definition. And I can now plug into the expectation the model that I have for the measurement x1, which tells me that x1 will be equal to the true parameter plus the first noise sample. When I do so, I can see that I'm simply left with the expectation of the measurement noise. And since we have defined the noise process to be zero mean, the expectation is zero. So even if, as we saw before, estimator one does for single instances give relatively large errors, the estimator is still unbiased. Let's check now whether the second estimator is also unbiased. Again, I compute the expectation of the estimation error. And once more, when I have my estimator, I plug in the function that it computes. I will skip the limits of the summation here. We know every time we have a sum, it's going to be from 1 to capital N. And once again, I will substitute the value of xi by the model that we have for it. So each of the measurements xi will be theta plus the corresponding noise sample. If I keep operating, I see that I can split this into two sums. In which, on the first sum, I'm simply summing n times the true parameter theta. And on the second sum, I'm <coughs> adding up the samples of the noise process. This first operation here, the sum will result in n times theta, such that when I divide by n again, I will be left just with theta. This theta will cancel out with the second one I had here, and I will finally be left with just the average of the noise samples. If I do that, I can apply linearity property of the expectation operator to this term, such that I'm averaging not the noise samples themselves, but the expectation of them. And because the expectation of each of the noise samples is zero, the result of this operation is also going to be zero. 
Very good. Let's now go to the MSC. We have seen that both estimators are unbiased, but I don't expect that both of them will have the same mean squared error. For the first one, this time we take the expectation, not of the, est not of the estimation error, but of the squared estimation error. We use again the same strategy and we plug x1 in place of the estimate x tilde and again we substitute x1 by the model that we have for it. As we can see the thetas cancel out and we are simply left with the expectation of the first noise sample squared. Now since the noise is a zero mean process, we know that the expectation of it squared is simply going to be the variance of the noise. So even if the estimator is unbiased, is given us a mean squared error that is equal to the variance of the noise process. Let's examine the case for the second estimator, the sample mean. And here we can probably use some of the calculations we have done before. I'll start in the same way. I will substitute the estimator by its function. And again, I will substitute each of the measurements by the model that we have for them. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to subtract the true parameter. We have already performed this operation before, where we saw that the sum here ended up being equal to theta plus the average of the noise samples. So we're going to just use the result and plug it in directly. On the one hand, we have the average of the noise samples on the other we have simply theta, which once more will cancel out with the one we are subtracting. So I'm just left with the square of the average of the noise samples. I can write this easily. 1 over n squared times the expectation of the sum of wi, all the sum squared. Now, again, if we realize that wi are zero mean samples, we can see, and therefore the sum will also be zero mean, we can see that the expectation here can be seen as the variance of a zero mean random variable, and this zero mean random variable is going to be made of the sum of different zero mean random variables. So I can write this the variance of the sum of the noise samples. Now, because we have modeled the noise process to be an IID process, and we know that the variance of a sum of independent 
samples or independent random variables. It's simply the sum of their individual variances. We can write the result as the sum of the variances and because all samples of the noise process are identically distributed or have the same variance sigma squared, the result of summing sigma squared n times here will be n times sigma squared divided by n squared, which will lead me to a mean squared error that is, again, dependent on the variance of the noise process, but in this case it's divided by the total number of samples. So, if I compare the two estimators, I can see that for the first one we obtain the variance of the first sample, while for the second one the mean squared error is simply the variance of the noise process but divided by the number of samples. The more samples I will have, the smaller will the mean squared error be. While for the first estimator, since it's only using one sample, it will keep having a constant mean squared error equal to the noise variance no matter how many samples I use. Obviously, between the two estimators, we would prefer the second one, which has the lowest MSE.